All right, we've got lots of shearling boots on the table today because we did a collab this year called the Mugs, short for Manly Uggs, because girls get to wear these wonderful, wonderfully hideous Uggs all winter long. They look nice and cozy. And to be honest, I'm kind of jealous of them. And so we went to work at, to design a pair of Manly Uggs and that was the result. And we launched them this winter and all 200 pairs sold out in under 24 hours, which was wild. We did not expect it to sell that fast. So we're gonna kind of go over this and why it sold out so fast and the whole design process behind it. Cause that's one thing with these cut in half videos is you just don't have as much time to really dig into the details of why we chose certain things and how we ended up designing this and uh, the goals and the, the things that went right, the things that went wrong, all that information, it's, it's hard to cover. So that's why we made the Rose Amber 2 channel just to allow me to, to uh, just kind of ramble and really cover some of the stuff that I wish I could cover on the main channel that I don't get an opportunity to. So that's what the that's what we're gonna do today. And Goral just finished making all of the mugs that are going to be shipped out before Christmas. Initially, it was the first 100 pairs were were guaranteed, hopefully, to be delivered before Christmas. We're gonna try our best. And Goral really went to work on this and got all 200 pairs done. And they're shipping them to me, and then I'm gonna ship them to you guys that are in the US and so fingers crossed that they'll be delivered. Every other collab we've done is with like boot companies and they're just so they're just so labor intensive compared to sneakers and there's so much demand with the with the work boot world right now compared to sneakers that and Goral is really good at what they do. They just kill it. They've been doing it for 100 years and they do a really good job. And so we're reopening the pre-order uh, I guess we call it pre. Yeah, I guess it's a pre-order, right? Because you don't, they're not going to be delivered. So it's a pre-order, and um, it's going to be the exact same shoe. Nothing's changed. Same black on gum. No customizations. And they're available now. So if you want a pair of these, go check them out. Via the link in the description because you just never know how many how many times we're going to be able to re-release something, and we don't know how many we're actually going to be able to sell. So get them before they're gone. And I think that's the majority of the preliminary information. Oh, and if you do order a pair of these before Christmas, I'm gonna put a downloadable PDF in the description of this video that you can download and print off. It's like a certificate of like, I bought you a pair of mugs, but your mugs aren't gonna be here until after Christmas. So here's a piece of paper that tells you that I bought you something nice for Christmas. So if you want that, it's in the description because you're, if you're ordering off of this, they definitely won't be there in time for Christmas, but they'll be here, be to you, hopefully early spring, so you can still get some good use and wear out of them, especially after Goro completely blew the first 200 pairs out of the water and got them done like way faster than we expected. So order them if you want a pair. If not, no worries. Hopefully there's plenty more collabs to come. And that's kind of the beautiful thing about doing these collabs is they, it's not the main money maker for my business it's mostly for fun you know we make money at them on them but uh, more than anything being someone that's that cuts boots and shoes in half for a living you just start noticing little holes in the industry little flaws little little things that aren't being done and you're like oh we could i could do that like like I, could, I just need to find a company that's willing to make this and we could totally do it and so that's why it's so fun and that's why i love doing them and and uh it's a, it's a really it's a really cool thing to be able to do. So I'm really appreciative of your guys' support and the brands that are allowing me to just like dream big, for lack of a less cringy term, and just be like, what if we did this and this and this and this and this? They're like, well, all right, let's let's try it. You know, so the brands are very uh, kind and generous in allowing my imagination just to go wild and make the weirdest and most unique, uh, some of the more weird and more unique sneakers on the market, especially with this small batch. I would, I would argue it's well, some of the collabs are some of the more wild. They've got, they've got to be the most wild, the small batch stuff. Like ob obviously Balenciaga and like some of these other big brands have some really stupid stuff. But I would say like for small batch, high quality and re making really unique and interesting stuff, our collabs hit the mark on all three of those most of the time, every time, hopefully every time. So, um, and kind of on that same note, there's this whole scarcity thing with drops and the resale market and all this and just so you guys know where we're at with that like i would love to sell as many like indie ones and indie twos and mugs and all these drifter boots as, as many as possible but the problem is because it's such a small batch there's only a there's only a certain amount of production time that that can be allocated to me and like my collabs 
And a lot of times on these collabs, the main brand like Goral is making less money doing the collabs than they would just selling more shoes and boots. And so, you know, they, there's just a natural cap to how many we're able to sell and how many we're able to deliver in a given time because of how many, how, how all the, the collabs we've done are all handmade. And so we don't do a fake scarcity tactic. It just happens that way because we can only work with the, the capacity the brands are willing to give us and they are very generous with it. Like they, you know, they usually we're able to do two to 500. So um, yeah, there's that. And I just wanted to let you guys know because that fake scarcity thing drives me nuts, especially like with the GPS sneakers. They're my number one sneaker of the year. Um, I just wish there's more of them and I don't know why they didn't make more of them. And I'm sure there's a reason and I'm sure Tom Sachs, because part of his thing is that he wants more shoes, but they just don't make more. But anyway, that's a huge uh, tangent. And we're going to release a full like hour long deep dive into the GPS because me and the, my sneakerhead consultant, Colin, we just uh, got in front of the camera and talked back and forth, went through all the details similar to this, but way longer and way more detailed. And I would argue more fun because it's not just me talking to the camera. Colin and I um, are good friends, and so it, it makes it a nice, natural conversation. So check or look out for that one when that comes out. So now let's kind of go over the history of the mugs. So I first started working with Goral in September 20th of 2020, so over two years ago. And we cut apart their flagship white sneaker as part of the white sneaker C series that we started after the huge backlash from cutting apart the common projects. So the common projects cut in half was by far my most controversial um, cut in half at the time and probably honestly still to this day because it trended on the front page of Reddit. It upset a lot of people in the style world because they were used to spending $500 on a simple white sneaker. And so we cut it apart before cutting apart any other white sneakers. And I was like, this is not, this is not $500 quality. And like, I, I don't think there should be like this, this and this in there. And like for 500 bucks, this is ridiculous. This is like a cash grab. And I think the title was like, um, cheap posing as premium. And there was like rebuttal videos and the same, the exact same thing that we're going through currently with Alden happened already with, with the common projects. And so this time around with the, 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 uh, Aldens, it's been a lot more fun because I've already been broken by the first round of backlash. And so this time around with Aldens, it's, it's a lot more fun and we're able to like, it's, a, it's just, I guess less, not fun, but less of a personal, intense moment for me in my personal life. So, um, I don't know why I was telling, oh, the first <laughs> Goro collab, or the first Goro video. So we cut this apart for the White Sneaker series, and then the White Sneaker finale was 10 days later, September 30th, and we chose the Gorals as the best built sneaker. I honestly would have chosen it best overall, but I just didn't like this outsole that they came out with. They've since brought back the original outsole, and uh, I just didn't like it, and I, I thought some of the other ones looked nicer, but if, it, if the outsole was different, I probably would have chosen them as by far the number one sneaker because it's the best built. We'll kind of go over that in a, in a bit. But then after that, we just, I just, I, I got along well with, the, with Dominic from Goral, and so we talked back and forth about potentially making like the world's best white sneaker and some collabs and some like uh, a sneaker with a lineman patch. We kind of, we worked through a bunch of, concepts and sent a few prototypes back and forth and just played with some stuff and we I just couldn't land on something like I was saying to the intro was like there wasn't something that was really new and different and unique and something that no one has ever done before it just felt like I was rehashing a white sneaker but just a little bit better and we might do a white sneaker down the road but I just didn't see a lot of need for it and so it just got put on the back burner and then late um, 2021 we started brainstorming some ideas for some more collabs and some, and we thought maybe it'd be fun to do a video together because Goral had started their series called Will It Shoe, where they take random things and try to, to make shoes out of them and see if it will shoe. And I was like, that's a cool concept. Like, and I was like, I kind of had it in the back of my mind and I was thrift shopping one day. I love thrift shopping. And I, I stumbled across a really nice vintage, like military style shearling jacket. And I was like, 
that would be cool. And we had just done <clears throat> the mugs video or the Uggs video. We were in the middle of doing like another shearling sneak or boot in the duck feet. And we had done the, the Sorrells and the big winter boot series. And so I was like, man, it was really on my mind. I was like, there is something missing in the market. It's a manly pair of Uggs because Uggs aren't worn for like strict warmth. You know, these are not replaceable. You can't replace a really heavy Sorel winter waterproof boot with an Ugg. Uggs are just like that cozy, comfy boot that you can, that women wear in the winter and they, they're not like waterproof or anything, but they're just kind of like their kick around shoe. And I was like, we need that for men. And so, um, I got that shearling jacket and I was like, Hey, what if we just did an episode of what you guys do? Will it shoe, but on a shearling jacket and see what pops out the other end. And so that's what we did. We launched a video. People really liked it. And people were like, you need to make that shoe. Please make us that shoe. I'll buy that. You know, and you never know if people are really honest about that from comments, but because of the, the positive feedback we got, we're like, well, let's try it. Let's just start running this down the road and see if we can come up with a cool shearling sneaker for the end of 2022. So we, we went to work on different prototypes. Obviously this is like version one, the real official mugs. And then we had a few different versions of prototypes, you know, like prototype one, it was a, a couple different colors. Prototype two, the pair that I've worn the most, that was way closer, had like all the different colors and stuff that I liked. And then the final version, which is still in this box, was basically the exact same thing, just refined a little bit. Just a little bit more polished, a little bit just better in a few little ways. And um, we put them for sale and launched the video of us cutting them in half, like you can see here. And they sold out in under 24 hours, which was so wild. And to be honest, I had no idea what to expect because like collabs, you just don't know. Like. Yeah, sometimes you think you come up with a, bu a brilliant product. You're like, this solves so many problems. It's perfect. And this, 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 and this. And then you launch it and it gets like two orders. And so I just didn't know what to expect. And, and the fact that it sold out that fast was pretty astonishing to me. It was pretty astonishing to Goral. And uh, so it was really cool. It was really fun. And so I thought I'd do this follow-up video just to kind of go through more of the details because I think people really like these sneakers. And those of you in the UK that's already started to get them, lots of positive feedback. People really like these. So that's kind of the history and how we ended up at this point at the relaunch of the mugs that once again is available in the description. Last plug, actually that's not last plug. I'm gonna plug it one more time at the end of the video, but second to last plug for them. So why did I choose Goral to do a collaboration on? So like I said, I chose Goral as the best built sneaker of the white sneaker series. And that was mostly because, not mostly, but a like big, pour, yeah, mostly, mostly because I really like that thick veg tan insole that was strobel stitched to the upper. So this was a really unique thing and Goral claims that they're the first people to ever do a, a Blake stitched trainer, sneaker. And the Blake stitch is, is important because these British sneakers and these white sneakers, they're, they're very expensive. They're like three to $600, depending on which brand you go with and what leather. And the idea is that you can easily resole them because a lot of these guys, especially Goral, has a reselling service that can sell you the actual cup soles so you can do it at home. And so in order to make a, a shoe actually resellable and not just a marketing uh, campaign, jargony, perk benefit thing, they introduced a Blake stitch. And the reason that's important is it, it mechanically locks the upper to that insole. So once you remove this, a lot of times with most shoes that are a cup sole that you can kind of resole, as soon as you start removing this, the upper is going to peel away from underneath and like it can start to rip and it can start to disintegrate. But that, because usually it's just glued together, but that Blake stitch along with the glue makes these almost impossible to screw up for a resole because it's like, it's literally just sewn together. So this is a single unit in and of itself that's separate from the cup sole. And so as long as this is intact and nothing's broken on the inside, you could resole this as many times as, as the upper lasts. And uh, I really like that. And it's still something that I think only Goral really does on this big of a scale. That was a good catch. I don't know if you caught that on camera, but reflexes are on point today. So, um, and then obviously like the high quality leathers, they've got the, the leather board counter, you know, just a lot of little features that I was really impressed with. And so we went with Goral for the collab. 
because I love that Blake stitch so much. And the, the leather insole is nice because it breaks into the shape of your foot. It's like naturally more smell resistant than like a lot of synthetic materials. And it's, it's leather and I like leather insoles. They're just the best. And maybe most importantly, going back to what I said earlier, like Dominic from Goral is very accommodating of my wild ideas and be, he's willing to like try stuff that they're like, that's probably not gonna work, but we'll try it. And so a big part of the reason I went with Goral is because they're willing to put up with me. And he's also willing to put up with me kind of uh, bothering him with trying to get some insight on some great uh, British television shows that I love, like uh, Love Island UK, and especially the great British baking show. Two favorites. And uh, I'm always like, so did you catch this episode? Like, hey, give me some insight. What was it, you know, so he's, he's like, he's willing to put up with that. And speaking of uh, British, TV show. Where did the name uh, uh, Mugs come from? Well, obviously, like I said four times, Manly Uggs, Mugs. But um, from watching some, some British telly, one of my favorite little words I picked up was mug. So like being a mug, um, someone describing someone as a mug, being mugged off. And it was one of my favorite terms that I learned. And so what does actually what does a mug mean? Because there's a lot of different ways. Obviously, there's like a cup, there's a face, but the British slang, according to dictionary.com, is British slang for a global person, person, especially one who is swindled easily. And the Urban Dictionary definition is to make someone appear stupid, especially by deceiving them or treating them badly in a relationship. Example: Rebecca slammed Luke for mugging her off. I feel like I've been mugged off. And that's that's one I picked up from Love Island UK. And so when it came to naming this, it was kind of funny when we released it, there's some people in the comment section that were just like, hey, just so you know, like mug's not a good word in England. Like you probably shouldn't name your shoes that. And I was like, that's the point. That's why we do it. Cause it's funny. Cause it's mugs. Um, but just, I think it just got lost on a few people that aren't into the trash TV from the UK. But uh, I thought it was a perfect name. And I didn't really care too much as long as Goral was okay with it calling it mugs because I wasn't really afraid of Uggs coming after us because Uggs, stole their name and the actual design of their boots from the real Australian brands that made the real Uggs. Like Uggs is a, corpor a US corporation that like trademarked it, I believe, and then will sue any of those companies that originally made the Uggs in, the, in Australia if they try to sell them in the US. And so there's this whole thing with Uggs being like this evil corporation that stole this design from Australia. So I was like, well, as long as Goral's fine with it, I'm fine calling them Manly Uggs or Uggs. So that's where the name came from. Next, what was the concept of the mugs? I wanted a warm sneaker that didn't look like a warm winter sneaker that you could wear on occasions when you when a sneaker's too cold and one of these big chunky boots is too warm. Just a nice in between all around like winter sneaker. And the goals with it was use as many natural materials as possible and I wanted absolutely no visible shearling because I don't care who you are, shearling is a little feminine. Okay, like some people say like they like it, whatever. I like a little shearling from time to time, but I don't want it popping out the top of my sneakers. I just don't like that feminine look. I wanted the sneakers to be kind of an, a covert warm sneaker. I wanted you to, to look at them and just be like, oh, he's got a cool pair of black gum sole leather sneakers on, but little did you know, the shearling on the inside and his feet are nice and warm and toasty. And that was kind of the concept, to be warm, but not hot, look like a sneaker, but act like a warm boot. So let's go over some of the prototypes and where how we ended up here. So V1 for the video. So there was some big flaws here. You know, this is a prototype and the biggest flaw was these eyelets just don't stay where they need to be because it's literally just a thin coat shearling and so that stretches a lot and those eyelets pop out like crazy. I also didn't like the two toning. I just don't like there's like cream and then there's cream stitching and the white sole and the, the cream laces and the, the off white shearling. It was just a lot going on. I didn't like how it just wasn't minimalist enough for me. And I also did not like the fact that it was kind of puffy. You know, even if you couldn't sh see the shearling, you'd still be like, oh, there's something, something weird with this shoe. These look a little, a little too puffy for just general leather sneakers. So I wanted to get rid of the puff of them. And so then we got to the V2, which were this pair. And this, this wasn't necessarily the colors we chose, but it was the first pair that we got sent. And I didn't like the multiple colors. Once again, I, I didn't like that the two browns were contrasting with like a gum outsole. I don't, I don't mind it, but it wasn't the look I was going for. And so 
I was like, hey Dominic, we should do just black everything and a gum sole. Like super simple, super sleek, like a stealth warm sneaker was kind of the idea. So then we got the V2, which is the, the pair that I wore the most and then we cut apart on the channel. And this honestly was like near perfect. Like most of the time, we've just gotten really, really lucky with collabs, like especially with the brands that we work with, they're really good at what they do. So instead of having like 20 rounds of prototypes, it only takes like two or three to get it perfect. And the, this version was nearly perfect. And there's really only a couple adjustments that we needed to make. You know, the, the toe was a little bit too bulky and wide and this gap was really big. Um, and this was the first time we did it in black and the goal was to get a leather that matched the matte finish of the shearling more than the chrome excel that was on this prototype but as soon as i got the prototype i really really liked that two-toning and i like the use of a chrome excel because it's a high quality it's a well-known leather it takes almost no conditioning and it's just like it's one of my favorite smelling leathers and so i was like you know what i kind of like that a little bit of a sheen on the chrome excel contrasted against the little bit more matte um, shearling on the flesh side and so I was like let's just keep it I, I like I like the two-toning a very subtle two-toning a lot le a lot more subtle than the brown pair and then the final pair the V3 I guess is what it would be the prototype 3 the final final version basically just those little flaws fixed and you got a finished pair and this pair's this pair's like honestly pretty perfect I love the outsole originally we were thinking about just going with like a, a, a traditional margum outsole but this one has a little bit more tread without being super chunky looking has a little bit more aggressive look on the side so that it's not it still looks like a sneaker but it, it has little hints of purposefulness so that was the final pair and now let's let's just quickly go over the insides again just in case you haven't seen that main video and we'll kind of discuss why we chose certain things and how it all worked so we fixed the eyelet problem first and by we i mean dominic and the guys at goral by just reinforcing it with a little bit thicker eyelets and an extra piece of Chrome XL as a reinforced area or reinforced strip. Um, we fixed the puffiness by choosing a little bit shorter shearling and by hiding it with some of these Chrome XL patterns or <laughs> patches, nope, uh, panels is what I was trying to say. So instead of like the really light fluffy feel of the toe box on the very first pair this chrome excel gives it that flat hard look while still being able to line the toe box with with shearling and it works perfectly because all they do is they throw a little toe stiffener between the chrome excel and the shearling and they glue the shearling to the chrome excel so you don't have to glue hair to hair it works out perfectly and then they also did a chrome excel i don't know if it's actually chrome excel it looks like it Chrome XL edge binding to match everything, to seal the edge, to hide the shearling, and to make it not as obviously two-toning. And I didn't like the fabric binding, so I wanted to do leather. Um, we had to have a functional pull tab. Like, to me, it just if you're gonna have a pull tab, it's gotta be functional. So many times people don't do functional pull tabs. And then we have the back stay and the heel counter as a Chrome XL layer as well. And so it ended up working perfectly because on the areas we needed some extra protection, we couldn't use shearling. And so it just happened to be perfectly two-toned and balanced well with the high quality leather. And on the inside, the whole thing is lined with shearling. And that was like a very important part because I didn't want a sneaker that was theoretically shearling. It's like, well, technically it has shearling on the inside, but the toe box isn't lined. I wanted your entire foot to be lined in nice, warm, cozy shearling. And so even the insole is shearling topped with like this wool matte material underneath to just give a little more structure and rigidity. I don't know where the actual half half went. Oh, here it is. There you go. Here's your visual. All shearling all around the foot, everywhere, all the time, forever. And underneath the insole is that classic Goral thick-ish leather insole. So it's not nearly as thick as like a five or six millimeter thick veg tan insole on like a Red Wing. This is more like that two and a half. It looks like, no, actually probably more like three. I can't remember off the top of my head how thick it is. And then it's backed with a little bit of fiberboard. And then underneath that is that little bit of yellow, I think it's from Germany, like German wool felted wool that fills the void where this where this upper is tucked underneath it creates a little cavity there so they fill it full of wool 
that does a couple things. It allows you to have another layer of, of uh, protection from the ground. It gives you a little bit of squish, a little more insulation, and it just evens out the shoe a little bit more because with these, with this, this type of outsole where you got the voids, you have to do it the right way with like a nice structure underneath your foot. Otherwise, if it's a, just a thin piece of like fiberboard, it'll mold to the shape of those columns and you'll have a high spot and low spot and it'll just, you'll have like a honeycombing effect on the inside. So you have to have a decent material on the inside of this style of outsole. Uh, if you're not doing like a big foam outsole, midsole. Um, and then the outsole, nice thick rubber outsole, you know, it's replaceable. You can send it in for a resole, even if you want to do like a different color outsole. That's, you know, they have different options for that. And um, like I said, it's just a nice, thick, rugged-ish outsole. Far from real rugged, but it's gonna give you a little bit more grip. It's not gonna be the most grippy shoe on ice, you know? It's gonna be just about as grippy as any other shoe, but it will be more grippy than like some of these really flat rubber uh, outsoles. And other than that, that's, that's pretty much the entire shoe. Oh, and like the, the leather, the counter is like a leather board counter. And like maybe next year's, because this is always the issue with these collabs is you want to go all out on like all the materials, but also you want it to be affordable for people to buy. And so, you know, it's, it's good for me because I start to see some of the other ends of making footwear and the compromises you have to make in order to actually sell the product you want to make. And so maybe like down the road, we'll do like a full leather version with like a full leather heel counter, another layer on the midsole, you know, something like that. But I think this does it really well. There's really not any synthetic materials throughout this except for the toe stiffener and that little teeny layer of fiberboard underneath the leather. Other than that, it's all like natural rubber, natural leather, shearling, which was a huge goal of mine because I, I just really like the idea of like the, the natural materials. They last longer. Wool is a magical leather or a, a magical fiber. If you haven't seen the Uggs or the Mugs video, I have I go over some of the stats on why wool is magical in those, so go watch those videos. So now I guess the final question is, why did it sell out in under 24 hours? Like what was it about this shoe that made it sell so fast on a mostly boot and a hype sneaker channel? And it's like, uh, it is a very like, it's a very, minimal shoe. So what, did, what was it that sold so fast? Oh, I think it really just comes down to the fact that it's really unique and nobody else makes anything like this. And so as far as I know, nobody makes a real shearling sneaker with high quality materials that's really resolvable so you get your money's worth and that doesn't look like a girl boot or shoe. Like I love these duck feet boots, but I would never wear any because they look like girl boots. I don't mind their Chelsea's. But uh, you just don't, I would never wear the shearling one. Even with like your big stomping winter boots, they're just big and bulbous and they, they're not stylish in any way. And then Uggs are for women. I don't care what you say. If you wear Uggs, good for you. We just can't be friends. Or maybe we can't hang out. Just kidding, I get it. Like Uggs are comfy and if you can pull them off, pull them off. But like most men are not gonna be trying to wear Uggs around on like a, a date walking around the Christmas lights or whatever you, you want to roll up in a pair of mugs and I, I think it was the right time for the collab I think it was how subtle it is you know because a lot of, I think a lot of the people that bought these are more in the boot demographic I would say and so they, they don't like the big flashy sneakers and then I also I think that su subtlety worked for a lot of the sneaker heads who are like it's so different from like all my really loud like uh, Nikes and Adidas that have all these different panels and colors and branding. It's just very minimalist and very clean so you can pull it off in almost any outfit. You can dress it up, you can dress it down. It just works really well as a universal winter sneaker. And obviously the construction materials, re the, the true resolability and the fact that you're supporting products that are made in England instead of like a factory in China or a factory in some other part of the world that you question their their standards for their employees. You know, you know exactly what you're getting with Goral. They're, they're in Sheffield. Sheffield. Everyone makes fun of how I say British. I think the, the worst one, first of all, I screwed up George. In French, it's, it's not George's, it's George. And I knew that because I think George St. Pierre is his, has an S on the end. So I knew that one. Um, the other one I screwed up was uh, Crown Northampton. I always say Crown Northampton. It's, and I believe they say Crown Northampton. They just like drop the H. It's hard, language is hard. So 
<laughs> I don't remember why I was going talking about that, but um, but you know where it's made. That's what I was trying to say, and you know the people that make it, and you know who designed it. So it's a little bit easier to justify spending more money on situations like that, in my opinion. So now, what about the future of the mugs? Well, the future is it's, they're back on sale now for as long as they are until they sell out, or until we close it, or until they've met their capacity. Um, I, like I said, I'd like to do an ultra premium version at some point, but I might save that for an actual sneaker sneaker because I think this works at the price point and the corners cut are done right and you don't really lose a lot of utility for the price savings. And you know, I'd like to do other colorways. I think it'd be cool to, to do something other than black and gum. I, I, I do like this one. It's just a little bit too many colors. So if you have an idea for, maybe we'll do like a more boot style one. Cause it actually one thing that I would like to improve in a future version is I would like to figure out how to make this tongue gusseted without making it puffy. Cause that's part of the issue is we decided to just, to just go with a regular tongue because I was, I was worried that with that many layers folded in on itself to make that like accordion style tongue, bellows tongue, that it would just be too bulky and we lose that slim silhouette because we already have so much bulk on the inside. And so we might do a version like that that's a little bit closer to a boot, but also the formula works and I think we just, I think it's about as perfect of a mug as you can get. So I don't know what's gonna happen in the future. I guess is really what it boils down to, but I'm willing to hear your guys' insight and your input. If there's something you think is missing from this or you think we could do better or like a different colorway or combinations of colors, let me know because that's part of the fun with this, these collabs too is, you know, we have a, we have a decent size following, but it's not like, it's not huge. You know, we can, we can easily make some of the collabs that you guys are interested in, in, in buying because we're such a small tight knit community of on like the Rose Anvil channel that you guys, your guys' say does impact what we do. And so <clears throat> let me know because I really had a, a good time making this collab. I'm really happy with it. I'm really proud of it. And I think everyone that bought a pair of these is really gonna like them. And I can't wait for people to start getting them and send me pictures of how they're wearing and their opinions of them. And just that whole thing is really fun. So if you get a pair of these, send me some pics on Instagram of, of them when you get them, just, just keep me updated, it's fun. And I don't, I, I don't always reply because we get so many DMs every single day that I try to read as many as I can, but it's just very overwhelming. And I feel like my time is better spent on making content and doing some more of the things that are maybe bigger picture, but that comes at the cost of the interpersonal connection with people that are trying to reach out. So I apologize. I just, it's hard to balance everything. And DMs are usually the one that get dropped first, but I do read them. So I appreciate all your guys' support in the comments, the DMs. Uh, even if I usually try to at least heart it if you send me a picture of a collab and like kind of chat so I, I do my best so thank you guys for all your support um, and go check out last plug for the mugs they're in the description and I at the time of recording this I don't know how long we're gonna sell them for I don't know how many um, Goral has capacity for so get them before they're gone because I don't actually know when they're gonna be gone and after this sale we'll probably just wait to revisit it until fall so if you missed this and you're watching it in July or something uh, just wait a couple months we'll have another release and check out the social media is everything check out Goral's channel of the will it shoe it's it's basically just like old like the like asmr style videos where it's just in their factory making random stuff from shoes the host sam is really fun and uh, the guys at Goral are solid dudes i love working with Goral. so thank you guys for making all these collabs possible thanks to the brands that make these collabs collabs possible thanks to you guys that buy these that support the collabs and uh i'm just really appreciative of everything you guys do because this is a dream job it's so much fun i love it and uh, support this content because I love making this content and the only way I can pri prioritize it is if it performs well enough that I can justify making them. So support this and that's enough of asking you guys to do stuff. So I appreciate everything you do. Thank you so much. See ya.